Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. For this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the source command in Linux. So source is a bash shell built in command that executes the content of a file that is passed as an argument in the current shell. So think about the source file or the source command as the import statement in other programming languages like react or node.js or think about the source file or the source command as your include statement in C or C++. Basically how the source file work or how the source command work, you can create a file and define some functions or variable in that file. And you can import that file or you can use that file in another file to get access to the functions and the variable that is inside of the source file. So I'm going to demonstrate how the source file work in depth. Currently I'm in the tutorial folder and I'm going to do an LS on that folder. And there are some files and folders already in there. I'm going to create two different files to demonstrate how the source command work. So I'm going to use the touch command to do that. So I'm going to name the file source file dot sh. And I'm also going to create another file. I'm going to name the file reg file or regular file dot sh. And I'm going to give myself execution permission one time. So I'm going to say chmod 755 source file dot sh. And I also want permission for regular file or reg file dot sh as well. So now if I do another ls on the folder, I have my reg file dot sh and source file dot sh. I'm going to clear the screen using the clear command. I'm going to use vi as the text editor. So I'm going to say vi source file dot sh. And inside of the source file, I'm going to put the shebang. So it's going to be slash usr slash bin slash env space bash. And inside of the source file, that's where you can create your functions or your variables. I'm going to create two variables inside of this file. So one's going to be name. And I'm going to assign the name variable to Nikki. And the other variable will be CT. And I'm going to assign the CD variable to Toronto. And that's all I'm going to put in this file for now. And I'm going to hit escape colon WQ to save and quit. And then I'm going to go over to the reg file and write my command. So the first thing I want to do is as usual, the shebang. And inside of this file, that's where you have to include your source file or that's where you put the source command. So to use the source command, you just use the keyword source and the name of the file that you want to include in this particular file. So the name of the file that I want to include or the name of the file that I want to source is the source file. Dot sh. Now that I include the source file dot sh in this file, I have access to the two variables that's inside of the source file dot sh. I have access to the name variable and I also have access to the ct variable. So I'm going to echo two lines inside of this file. So I'm going to say echo my name is and I want the name variable. And I'm also going to echo uh, live in dollar sign and I want access to the CT variable. That's all that you need to do for this particular file. So I'm going to hit escape colon WQ to save and quit. So now I have to run the regular file because the source file doesn't have any commands. It just have a list of variables. So you have to run the reg file. So I'm going to run the reg file using dot slash reg file dot sh. And I got back the name variable and the city variable that I have placed inside of the source file dot sh. I'm going to give another example 
first I'm going to clear my screen. You can also use the dot as well to refer to the source file. So if I go back to vi reg file dot sh, if I remove the source keyword and I use a dot, it will still run as usual or as expected because you can use the dot instead of the source command. So if I hit escape colon WQ to save and quit. And if I go back and I run reg file dot sh, you would still get the same results. So you can either use the, the dot or you can use the keyword source. I'm going to give another example using arrays. I'm going to create a file called array file dot sh. I also want another file called print data dot sh. And now if I do an ls, I have the print data dot sh and I also have array file dot sh. So let's give ourselves execution permission using the chmod command. And I want print data dot sh and array file dot sh. And if I run another ls on the file, now you can see that both files are executable. So I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to use the VI text editor to put some data in the file. So the first file I'm going to use is the array file dot sh and I'm going to go ahead and put in the shebang. So in this file, I'm going to declare an array. I'm going to use the declare keyword clear dash a and I'm going to call my array a underscore array and for this array I'm going to assign some data so I'm going to say I'm going to say Tammy and his password is going to be Tammy01. I'm going to use John and John password is going to be John one, two, I'm just going to do one more. So I'm going to say Jake and Jake password is going to be Jake 23. So I just declared an associative array with the username and the password. So I'm going to change this T to uppercase T. So now I'm going to save this file escape colon WQ. So now I'm going to go inside of the print data file using the VI text editor. And inside of this file, that's where I'm going to write all my commands and get the data from the array file. So the first thing I want to do, I want to source the file that I want to get the data from. So I'm going to use the source command or you can use the dot and I want to source array file dot sh. So I'm going to create an echo statement and I'm going to say user and password and I'm going to use a loop to get the data inside of the array file dot sh. So I'm going to say for key in dollar sign curly brackets exclamation mark and inside here I'm going to use a underscore array and I want to get everything in that file so I'm going to use the star and I'm going to use the do statement and I want to echo or I want to print key the key is going to equals to dollar sign curly braces a underscore array and inside of the brackets again I want to get the key variable and then I'm going to use my done statement. So now I'm going to hit escape colon WQ to save and quit and now I'm going to run the print data file. So I'm going to say dot slash print data dot sh and I get back the user and the password. I'm going to give one more example. I'm going to create two files again. So I'm going to call this files options.sh and I also want a display.sh and I'm going to give myself execution power using the chmod command. 
Now if I do an ls, I have my option.sh and I also have my display.sh. So I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to use a vi as a text editor. As always, put in the shebang. And inside of this file, I would write all of my functions and variables that I want to use. So the first function I'm going to write, I'm going to write a menu function and I'm going to call this function menu. So that's all for this function. I'm going to create another function to display the disk space. So I'm going to say function. And I'm going to call this function disk space. And instead of this function, I'm going to say df dash k. So the next function I'm going to create is going to call users. And this function will display logged on viewers. So I'm just going to issue the command who. I'm going to create another function to display the memory. So I'm going to, I'm going to name this function memory space. I'm going to say cat PROC. I want memory info in the proc file. So I'm going to save this file using escape colon WQ. And now I'm going to go into VI now and include this file inside of my display file. So I'm going to use a VI to write some code in the display file. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the shebang exclamation mark slash USR slash bin slash ENV space bash. So the first thing I'm going to do inside of this file is to source the option file. So I'm going to say source, or you can use the dot, whichever one is your preference. And I want to include options.sh. And the first thing that I want to print is the menu. So I'm going to call the menu function that is inside of the option.sh file. So when the menu display, I'm going to read or get the user input. So I'm going to use the read command and I want a variable called option. So when I run this program, the menu would be the first thing that pops up on the screen. So once the menu pops up, I want the user to choose an option. And once they choose the option, then the proper function will run. I'm going to use the case statement to demonstrate the program. So I'm going to say case dollar sign option in. And if the user enters zero, then I want the program to break. So I'm going to use the break keyword and the double semicolon. When you use in the case statement inside of Linux, you have to use the double semicolon to let the system knows that this line is done. So if the user enters zero, then the program will just stop. Or if the user enter one, then I want to run the disk space function that I have inside of the options.sh folder. So I'm going to call the function disk space and I'm going to use the double semicolon or if the user enters two, then I want the users function and then I'm going to hit double semicolon. If the user enters three, then I want to run the memory space function and I have to close off my case function and to close off the case function in Linux, you spell case backwards. So it's going to be ESAC. To, so I'm going to say E S A C and that's all you have to write for this script. Now I'm going to demonstrate how the program runs running the display.sh file display.sh. And now I get to the screen. So this is the menu function that I created. So the first option I'm going to choose is number one, which will display the disk space. Uh, and it displayed the disk space in the system. I'm going to run the script again. 
and this time I'm going to choose option two, which will display the logged on users. And these are the logged on users on the system. And I'm going to run the script again. I'm going to use the option three and option three gives me the memory spaces. And I'm going to run the function one more time. And this time when I hit zero and enter, the program will exit. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I will see you guys in the next tutorial.